Hey everyone, this is D, Movie Man. Fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic coming to you with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. And today I am coming to you all with something a little bit different. So very recently, a YouTube friend of mine, Lost in the Real, celebrated reaching 2K subscribers. <laughs> and with that, he's created a competition for fellow YouTubers to participate in. And before I go any further, let me just say, if you are not following Lost in the Real, I don't know why. <laughs> Okay, that is where you need to be. I need you to subscribe. I need you to like, I need you to comment. I need you to check his stuff out because not only is it great content, not only are there great reviews and commentary for movies and TV shows, but also his energy is on point. He's so engaging and I always have a great time watching his videos. And then on top of that, I just appreciate how encouraging he is how positive he is, the fact that he does so much outreach, not just to me, but to so many YouTubers. So much positive commentary and great dialogue. This has definitely been a journey for me as far as YouTube, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. And just seeing the comments that he leaves, just putting out so much positivity and good vibes and encouragement to so many people. This last year was really tough, and trying to build up a YouTube channel in the midst of that was very unexpected. And it's been a bit of a challenge because trying to push out content and learn and grow and trying to keep up with everyone else, so to speak, and just build a platform is challenging. And a lot of times you kind of question what you're doing and you don't know if it's worth it. But seeing comments like Lost in the Reels, it just feels like someone cares, someone sees you, someone understands that you have potential, that you have a voice, that you have something to put out there that people really want to hear and watch and see. And that is just... I don't know, like there are no words for that, but I am so grateful to you, Lost in the Real. Sean, thank you just for what you've been putting out, not just to me, but for others. And to me, it's no surprise that you're at 2K, not just because your content is on point and you're so consistent and you just push them out because that's true too, but just the fact that you are an awesome person and you are so willing to just spread so much positivity to other people. That's just something that's so valuable, especially with all the craziness and negativity we can see from day to day. And so the fact that you are constantly putting that kind of energy out there for others to pick up on, it totally makes sense that it's coming back to you in spades and I'm sure that will continue. So thank you so much for who you are and all that you do. And then of course with this competition, I also thank you for that because I said a long time ago, whenever I started doing a channel, Along with recaps and reviews and reactions, I would also take the time to do like list videos. So like my favorite this, underrated this. And so I love the fact that you have created this competition that pushes me to do just that. And so with that being said, I am coming to you all with my top three hidden gems. And I am going to start with number three. Now this film was definitely a surprise for me and it's one that I had no idea that I would love as much as I do. And that film is none other than 2014's Edge of Tomorrow, directed by Doug Lehman and starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. Story-wise, this film is adapted from the 2004 Japanese light novel, All You Need Is Kill by Hiroshi Sakurazaka. And as far as the film, it is centered around a future in which Europe is being invaded by a foreign enemy. Now, what that enemy is, I won't spoil. And Tom Cruise portrays Major William Cage, a public relations officer who has zero combat experience, who finds himself drawn into combat against his will. And matters are further complicated when he finds himself experiencing a time loop in which the same day repeats over and over again. So the reason I included this on my list is that when it was marketed and I saw the trailers, I had no idea what it was about. And I just assumed it was another Tom Cruise sci-fi vehicle. And I think part of the issue is that the trailer literally doesn't show the enemy that I was talking about. And it doesn't really give you a huge idea of how the story flows. And in a way, it's a good thing because when you watch it, it's like, whoa, it's really mind blowing. But it's also a double edged sword because by not showcasing that, people I think didn't know what to take from it. And I know I didn't. So I had no real interest in seeing it because I was like, this just looks like a generic sci-fi film with some kind of Groundhog Day twist. 
And it probably didn't help that he had just starred in a sci-fi film called Oblivion the year before. Because I think at one point I thought Oblivion and Edge of Tomorrow were the same film. They're very, very different. But I just think because they were so close together in my mind, I still probably thought, is this the same movie? And this is also back when I didn't have a lot of access to the theater, didn't have a whole lot of money just to go consistently. So I had to be very choosy about what I was going to watch. So unfortunately, Edge of Tomorrow got the shaft. So then I want to say it was next year that I ended up renting it and was able to see it for myself. And I have to say, I was totally blown away. And although I know why, in the end, the marketing really did not do it justice because I did not expect going into that film to get everything that I got out of it. It would be easy to kind of see it as your typical Tom Cruise action sci-fi film, but there are a lot of layers to it. The effects, the story, the enemy that I keep talking about, and I won't spoil it because I'm telling you, the first time I saw what they were fighting in the film, I was like, oh. It really caught me off guard. And it doesn't help that there's a very shocking scene that happens very early in the film that kind of was like, oh, wait, wait, what's going on here? And from there, the rest of the story is like a roller coaster ride. It's just like, you don't know what's about to happen. You don't know what's going down, but it is such a thrilling experience. Tom Cruise, what I really loved about Tom Cruise's performance is that we're so used to seeing him as a balls to the wall, in your face action star. Mission Impossible and similar films, but he was kind of playing against type here, at least for the majority of the film, because he is portraying someone who does not fight and is basically a coward. <laughs> so it's interesting seeing him start off that way and just seeing the progression of his character. And then Emily Blunt and how her character factors into everything. And I also love that along with the action and the stunts and the thrills, it's a very funny movie. <laughs> And it's funny in a very subtle way also. Like it's not like slapstick over the top funny, but it's the right touch of funny. And you appreciate it because you see a lot going on. It's very tense, it's very shocking, and there's a lot of unexpected things that happen. So the moments where we do get that humor, it is definitely much needed relief from everything else that's going on. And I also have to shout out the late Bill Paxton. I've been a fan of Bill Paxton since I was very young because of Twister and Titanic. And he's done other films, of course, but his performance in this, oh my gosh, I feel like he was kind of the unsung star of the film. <laughs> and really, he was my favorite part of this. I mean, he was so great, he was so funny, and I really miss him. I'm so sad he's not with us, but this film is definitely an example of how talented he was and how there was a lot more to him than just some of the more serious roles that I was used to seeing him in. It really was a great experience watching it. I've had so many movie nights where I've shown it to other people and they've had a similar experience where I was like, whoa, I was not expecting that. And I think so many people don't realize just how good it is. And unfortunately, the marketing didn't give it a chance to really shine and get out to audiences the way it should have. So since we're talking about hidden gems, I absolutely had to include that one. Now I'm gonna move on to number two. And this film is just another example of why I love foreign films. They just give me everything I need and everything I didn't know I needed. <laughs> and this film is 2015's The Wave, aka Bolzin, directed by Rar Utag and starring Christopher Yona and Anadol Torp. And the story is just as straightforward as the title suggests. It is centered around a 260 foot tall tsunami caused by an avalanche that threatens to destroy a nearby village in Norway. I have always been a disaster film fan. One of my favorite disaster films is still Dante's Peak. I remember seeing that when I was, I don't know, seven, six, like, and I was so shook. I was not prepared for any of that. I was so into it, but so traumatized at the same time. I'm just like, wait a minute, could this really happen? So it's just one of those genres that I've always enjoyed. And this film was no different, but I think what I loved about this film, first and foremost, the cinematography. This was filmed in Norway in a village known as Garenger and the opening shots and just the shots throughout this film of the mountains, of the town and the water like oh I kid you not I am such a sucker for good cinematography and I have said this plenty of times if I literally want to take a screenshot of what I'm looking at and blow it up and put it on my wall then you've done a good job <laughs> like I have such an appreciation for good visuals and just the beauty 
being showcased already drew me in, let alone everything else that came afterwards. I mean, there are already so many places in the world I would love to visit, but Norway absolutely jumped up on that list after I saw this film. And what I really love about this film, that even though it is a disaster film, it feels very fresh. It feels very original. It doesn't feel like it's copying other films in the genre. It literally feels so atmospheric and it feels so tense. And you really do get invested in the people, especially the main family that the story is centered around. You realize the stakes really are high. And because everything is so well plotted and well paced, when we finally get to that moment where all you know what breaks loose, it's like... And I think what added to it, of course, were the great performances by all the actors. And I think what really made this work for me is that it all felt very realistic. And part of that is because Norway is actually known to be a very rock slide prone area. And this film is partly based on real life incidents that occurred in 1934 and 1905, where there were rock slides that triggered these tsunamis that destroyed towns. And although there has not been another tsunami since 1934, the film is dealing with the reality of, hey, what if this just happened again? And I think incorporating this imagined disaster, but the reality of what could actually happen in a very real town and has happened historically, and it's even said in the film, so knowing that, it really adds to your perspective because it's like, wait a minute, this isn't just like us throwing CGI at the screen or like, hey, what if? No, what if? <laughs> because this has happened and it could happen again. There is literally a point in the film where all you hear is silence and then all you hear is this siren echoing across the entire village and you know what's about to happen. And even though I was just watching the film, I like froze. So I was like, oh no, this is it. It's happening, <laughs> you know? So I got into it. Like it really pulled me in. So if you are a disaster film fan or even a foreign film fan like myself, I would absolutely recommend this. And I realize it is a foreign film and not everyone is into subtitles and things like that, but I think it's definitely worth the watch. And that's why I would say why it's more hidden. It's a great film, but not everyone would know where to find this or they would think, oh, this is foreign, I have to read subtitles. I would say just brush past that and allow yourself to experience this because it was quite the ride for me. So now I'm going to close out with my number one hidden gem that is 2007's The Orphanage, AKA El Orfanato, directed by J.A. Bayona and starring Belen Rueda and Fernando Cajo. And here the story is centered around Laura, who returns to the orphanage she was raised in as a child. And her plan is to reopen the orphanage as a facility for disabled children. However, those plans are disrupted when a shocking and unexpected tragedy occurs. And in the wake of this tragedy, Laura finds the determination to solve the mystery behind it. But to do that, she'll have to face the dark legacy that is hidden within her childhood home. So back when Blockbuster was still in operation, they had a mailing DVD service similar to Netflix. And I think I must have placed this film on my queue because it was recommended or it came up somehow. I'm still not sure how I found it, but it was on my queue. And I ended up watching this. And it was funny because initially I assumed that it was directed by Guillermo del Toro because not that long ago I had seen Pan's Labyrinth and just the vibe I got from the cover and everything else. Else, I just figured, oh, okay, this is another film that he's done. Well, not quite. But Guillermo del Toro actually executive produced the project. And I do remember that on the front of the cover, it said Guillermo del Toro presents. So that's why I thought that. I have been a horror fan since I was very, very young, probably too young, but for whatever reason I was into it. And especially horror stories. I've always been into horror storytelling. Films also, but definitely the storytelling aspect of it. I have always been into that. I've read so many different horror story anthologies and series and all of that, and it really draws me in. And what I love about The Orphanage is that to me, it feels like a horror story come to life. And I also love that it's not your typical horror story. So we're not just doing cheap jump scares here, but it is extremely atmospheric. It is very eerie. It is very unsettling. And for me, Horror is so many things, and I think it's very easy to put horror in a box. And of course, as a genre, I think we see a lot of the same old films. And I'm not knocking The Conjuring Universe because I think it's really cool, but those are the kind of films that have kind of dominated. And so we don't get a lot of fresh perspectives or different perspectives when it comes to horror. And to me, The Orphanage shocked me because it was a different perspective of horror. 
and the depths to which the story went, I was not prepared for. There are some really emotional layers here. We're dealing with grief. We're dealing with loss. We are solving this mystery. There is this dark secret at the root of the house and just uncovering that mystery and just seeing how everything unfolds, <laughs> you know. And then the performances, especially Belen Rueda, she was so awesome in this. I empathized with her. I felt for her. I understood her journey. I understood the lengths she was willing to go to to solve this mystery. And as we go on, it's just, there's a lot with that story and of course I'm not going to spoil it. And unfortunately it's a film that a lot of people don't know about, partly because it's foreign, but whenever I mention it people are like, orphan? And usually what they're referring to is the 2009 horror film starring Isabel Furman and Vera Farmiga, which is not the same thing. So unfortunately it's one of those films you really have to go out and search for. So for me it was absolutely a film I had to include as a hidden gem because even the way I found it, it was kind of an accident. And it was a very significant film for me along with Pan's Labyrinth because that was my first experience with Spanish language films, which naturally opened the door for me to discover more films like that. So they also are significant and important in that way, but they also are beautiful films, beautifully made films. And although Pan's Labyrinth is the film that got more of the acclaim and the reception and all of that, whereas The Orphanage didn't quite get that, even though I feel like it deserved it just as much, if not more, as Pan's Labyrinth. They're both great films, but I have to say The Orphanage really struck a chord with me and it was such a beautiful film to experience and another great one to add to my experience with horror films. And it was just another reminder of why I love horror storytelling and the horror genre. All right, so that wraps up my top three hidden gems. I have to say, it was tough coming up with a list initially because I had to really search and think like, what would be considered hidden? I came up with a lot more than I expected, so then I had to pull it back down to three, which was tough, but I'm glad I had the chance to do this because I do love putting people on to films that are underappreciated, underrated, films that people aren't familiar with or hadn't heard of, films that were well made and deserved acclaim but didn't do well at the box office and so on and so forth. There are so many films like that. So the fact that I was able to do this and give my little three, I think that's really awesome. Once again, shout out to Lost in the Real, shout out to Sean for being just a great YouTuber, a great content creator, and just a great person. Once again, I just really appreciate what you're putting out. And I honestly pray that everything that you're putting out comes back to you tenfold. I think it's already happening, but I definitely believe it's gonna continue on. And of course, I have linked his channel down below, so please check him out. Like, comment, just support in general. Please support him the way he supports others, because I'm telling you, <laughs> it is so, so appreciated. And of course, I'm sure you and I will be chatting it up in the comment section very, very soon. <laughs> so, once again, this is D, Movie Man, signing off. And I'll see you at the movie.